This is your macroeconomics video on international finance. So now let's pretend that the U.S. doesn't exist with no trade partners. In fact, we exist in a world in which the United States has many trade partners and many countries that we have diplomatic relationships with where people can travel to and do business. So if you want to save your money or put your money in a bank, you do not have to save and spend your money in your own country. You can buy things made in other countries and you can also bank in international banks. So the savings that is used by banks to finance projects, which is typically investment type spending and businesses coming in for loans to expand, some of that money could be borrowed by companies in a foreign country. So the money in American banks can be used to finance international businesses and foreigners can also decide to save their money in American banks if they want. So capital inflow is when foreign money or foreign savings comes in to the country to go into the U.S. banking system that foreign money is going to come into the U.S. system and then it's going to finance investment projects in the United States. Capital outflow is when you have domestic savings accounts or Americans sending their money to foreign um, banks in order to invest in or spend in a foreign country. So there's there's constantly money coming in to the U.S. banking system from foreign countries and American banking money going out of the country and into foreign banks. But on net, are we doing more inflow or more outflow? And that's one of the things we're going to talk about in this unit. Some things to consider. Investment projects, which are business spending products, are financed by capital inflow. And if what that means is that there's more national costs because the foreign saver is going to get paid interest. So if a foreigner decides to put their money in the American system and it's going to fund a business project here in the United States, the foreigner then gets paid interest on their savings. So the interest payment is going to be considered outflow when it goes to pay the foreigner their interest but the money they put into the investment in the United States is capital inflow. If all of the money that is in American banks is going to pay interest to only Americans or only going to fund American business expansion in the United States, then all of the costs and benefits would stay with the United States. But that doesn't happen because we have business and banking trade partners throughout the world. So the interest payments um, wherever they're being paid to can be capital outflow if it is um, a foreigner. Capital outflow can also be referred to as negative inflow. Investment can also be, be funded can be funded by domestic savings, meaning that an American puts their money into an American bank and then that bank decides to loan it to an American business. And then of course, the person who saved their money gets paid the interest, so that stays within the United States. So to make all of this make sense, we're gonna balance this equation. All of these things should, should equal zero. So all of the savings in the United States minus the investment spending, you add in the capital inflow coming into our system from foreign governments, and then you add any budget balance um, by the US government. If you add those things together, they should equal zero. So go ahead and get out your active learning sheet. We're gonna start a new active learning paper for macro unit three. This is active learning number one, and I've given you some numbers here for investment spending, private savings, and budget deficit. Um, you're gonna answer question A or B. You do need to show your math and you're gonna use that balance equation to figure out um, in A, what are the country's capital inflows? And then in B, with a slight change, what would the capital inflow be?